Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. And I am joined today from a good friend of mine, Matty from the Magpie channel. How are we doing, mate? All good, mate. All well, I'm still absolutely shattered from the weekend in Wembley. And obviously, I'm still gutted about not beating the wrong side of Manchester, you know what I mean? But uh, it is what it is. We'll look forward to getting back into the Premier League now and try and push on to get top four, mate. Yeah, I mean, we, we, outside looking in, we've seen the scenes. It was good to see all the Geordies in Trafalgar Square. Um, we heard you all in the stadium, you know, back in the boys, even though you were getting beat, you were still behind them. So it's good, it's good to see. I bet you're knackered, aren't you? Uh, it's been a crazy weekend, man. Like, crazy, crazy weekend. Barely any sleep, loads of emotions. Like, Saturday night, Trafalgar Square, like you say, was chaos. Sunday at Wembley, you know, we took over Wembley, black and white flags. Those shade fans, you know what I mean? Free scarfs on the seat trying to compete with the atmosphere with the free scarfs. I mean, I couldn't believe it, man. Pathetic. And then after the game on Wembley Way, you know how they stop you from getting to the tube yeah. and have that segregation thing. Wasn't a noise from them. They've just won a cup and there wasn't a single noise. They're all just standing there. Yeah. Now, yeah, imagine if you talk about they won that, mate. They would have been mental. Oh, mental. Mental. I seen them leaving. Some of them left before he even got the trophy. He was walking out. Uh, who does that? Do you know I mean, they probably live yeah. three tube stops away now. So, what's yeah. <laughs> no, it's mad, mate. And listen, I think I think it's going to be the first of many. It's good to see um, the Newcastle uh, fans getting the rewards. I mean, the takeover was brilliant for you. Like we've been down the same road. I know exactly how you're feeling and 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 the, what sweeps through your club. And it just gives the club a lift from top to bottom. Um, you could tell earlier on in the season when we went to Newcastle that the whole place was buzzing, you know what I mean? The town was buzzing. You know, everyone was like on it, you know what I mean? And that game at the at St. James's Park. Oh, what a game, you know, man. I think, I think you let, let us off the up there. I thought mm. we were dead and buried, you know. But for us to come back and get a point, looking back, it's a good point for us that... It was. I. And to be fair, you had the you had a chance to win it at, at the end to make it 4-3, which would have been heartbreaking because we at least deserved a draw out with that game. at 3-1 up. And I know City's firepower was there and it was kind of an expectancy of... When will they score and come back? Not if they will, but we, should, we still should have hung on to that man. But I t tell you what, like a 3 3 entertaining game, it was still a good point for us as well. Let's be honest, you know what I mean? Um, and it was an amazing game that, like, and the goals in the game. Let's hope we get something similar this weekend. But Jesus, the way we've been goal shy, I kind of see it happening. Like, I was going to say that I mean, season so far for you guys has been a good season. Last few results, Bournemouth. Um, disappointing point there and then you lost at Liverpool I mean outside looking in for me it just looks like you're lacking a bit of firepower I know mm. I know uh, Wilson is up and down uh, Isaac's been injured I mean is that all it is firepower or, or are you just a bit short elsewhere Mick can, can Jack Grealish say something nasty about Miguel Almiron again please so he can oh, get no, firing yeah. again <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. He took yeah. the piss out of Almiron. and he went on an eight, nine game goal scoring run and then he hasn't scored for, for a couple of weeks. He scored against Bournemouth, but before that, you know, he just hasn't looked himself base. He's the purple patches there with Almiron. That was unreal at the at the start of the season. Callum Wilson, I think he just gave his heart and soul into getting into that England World Cup squad. And he's he's done in now. He's just I mate, mean, he's lost his sharpness. He's he's injured one week. He's he's only training two, three days a week at the minute. Do you know what I mean? He's just his body's, his body's gone. He needs a rest. I think we've got to start Alexander Izak this weekend because he looked bright against Man United. Um, and, but he's coming back from, what, three and a half months spell on the sidelines. So those are the reasons, really, mate. But once Izak gets fit and firing, once we can start, you know, St. Maximum's back in the team now, hopefully start pulling things back together. But because we're, we're, just, we're just drawing too many games, man. We're not scoring enough goals. I mean, top four has got to be the one for you. I mean, Spurs, I think you've, you've got a couple of games on Spurs. Spurs are looking shocking. Even last mm -hmm. night, they got beaten in the cup. He's got to be there for the wow. taking. If, if, if Isaac can get get firing again, um, I think I think you'll get that top four, me, no problem. I think we will. I mean, I, 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 well, to be fair, I said the other day, I think we'll probably slip to fifth or sixth because of, you know, Liverpool coming back and they're going to get knocked out of the Champions League, obviously. Um, they won last night. Spurs should do it. With Spurs' squad, they should do it yeah. with Conte, but they are doing everything to not get it. Maybe FA, being out the FA Cup now, and they could potentially be out of Champions League next week. Who knows? But I mean, it's there for the taking. It's we, we need to start getting three points instead of, oh, we went on this thing, like 17 games unbeaten, but half of them were nearly draws. Do you know what I mean? So we need to start getting three points. We need to start winning games because it is there for the taking, and I don't think there'll ever be a better chance to get top four than this year. With the fall off of 
uh, Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs in a bit of a madness. And, you know, this is a, this is a golden opportunity. We've got, we've got to start winning games, but this weekend is obviously the hardest one of the lot for me. Well, we're in a must-win situation now. Obviously, Arsenal won last night, takes the gap to five. Um, we just had one of them seasons where we, we take two, three steps forward and five back, shoot ourselves in the foot, go, go and lose at Spurs, go to the Emirates, wipe, wipe the floor with them, then go and drop points at Forest. Mm. Um, you know, I think we've had six aways in the last 24 days, have been to Arsenal, Tottenham, Forest, Leipzig, uh, Bournemouth and Bristol in the last 24 Jesus days. So we've been you, must be not good, you must be not good. <laughs> I am not good, mate. I, I tell you, I'm, I'm not good. I'm surviving on the coffee at the minute, but um, we're starting to get a little bit of momentum, especially after the Bournemouth game, especially after Bristol. I know it's only Bournemouth and Bristol, but when we've been a bit stop start, it's good to just pick up these wins and look like, you know, we've got the best striker in the world <laughs> other than Mbappe up front and we don't pass him the ball. Some games he won't touch the ball for 22, 23 minutes, but he only needs one touch. He gets one chance to yeah. score. So Haaland was rested the other night for Bristol, so I'm expecting Big Earl to start. Uh, Phil Foden, he's overcome his little injury niggles now. He's starting to, to tick over a little bit. Jack Grealish, he's, he's been played well consistent all season, but he's just not assisting and scoring, which a lot of people look at that, you know, when they're judging players. I, I like to watch them week in, week out. Um, you've had similar with Bruno. Bruno come back, like we said off air, a little bit too early for the final. Probably just wanted to get back. Um, is he still carrying a knock or is he going to play? He got another knock at Wembley. I was just reading yeah. before. He's, he's took another knock at Wembley, so he's a doubt. Obviously, we'll, we'll hear. Well, I was going to say we would hear more in the press conference tomorrow, but we won't because Eddie Howell never, ever gives anything away. You always see no. someone's out or someone's in and it's normally the opposite or you just can't know. But if Bruno is missing or oh, what... That'll be a massive blow, obviously, because if we're to get anything this weekend, he's by far our best player. He's the one that makes things tick. So that'll be that'll be a huge knock if he has got a knock and he doesn't he doesn't start, mate. Because I watched you um against Bristol the other night, and you know that is that isn't an easy game, like you know, Bristol no. I thought played well in part as well. It's an awful hostile ground by the looks of it as well. Um took your chance as well at the end. So Foden. Interesting what he said now, to be fair, in his interview after the game, you know, he's he's fighting back. So, oh, it's not looking, I'm not looking too good for Newcastle this weekend, to be honest with you. I'm like. just hoping, like I say, I'm just hoping we can, well, I'm expecting a reaction from you, lads. I think the players are going to be disappointed and obviously the support that you gave them, they're going to want to go out um, and, and put a shift in at the Etihad and show you boys, you know, you know what they're about. Um, we need to win. We can't afford to drop points, lose or draw. Now we're on that, like, 12, 13 games where we've got to just go win, win, win all the way to the end of the season, which we've done before. Um, my only concern is Pep likes to tinker a little bit this season. Rico Lewis, some inverted right back position. Um, it works some games, some games it doesn't. Um, and like you say, we've just got to get the ball to the big man. So I'm expecting City to, to win on the Saturday. I'm, I'm expecting us to to throw the kitchen sink at Newcastle and try and put you under a bit of a pressure early doors. Um, I just wanted to speak to you as well about uh, St. Maximum because the guy, I, 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 I watch him sometimes and I think the guy's unstoppable. Mm. And then I watch him other times and and he must be so frustrating to watch. Like he, I see him do stuff and he'll try a step over and it'll go out for a throw in or, and then other times he's running into dead ends and ploughing through people and that. I mean, you watch him every week. I only see gl glimpses of him. Is he really that good or is he just a bit mad? You've, you've probably summed it up, mate. To be honest with you, he's, he's so inconsistent. It's mental. One week you look at him and you think, Jesus, and he's proclaimed this himself that he would want to go on to win the Ballon d'Or. That's how that's how his mind works. He thinks he can win the Ballon d'Or. So, but on one week you'd watch him like you at the start of the season. Remember Pep Guardiola? He was like on his knees. He was like, "Wow, what's this yeah. bloke doing?" At St James's Park, one week you look at him and you think he's top top class. Like he could probably play for anybody. And then the next week you think he belongs at fucking Rotherham. Like he's yeah. just wank. Sometimes he just completely completely goes missing. Completely goes. It's just I mean, it must depend on what mood he wakes up in the morning. If his missus is stocked. Stopped his crunchy nut or not, and he, he opens the cupboard. The crunchy nut's not there. He's having a shit game. Yeah. <laughs> he's just whatever. He, some days he's just unreal. Some days he can beat every man. He can score a goal. He can pick out the right pass. And then the next day, his head and his feet don't work together. They don't know what they're going to do. 
there's, there's no idea. He's just like total freestyle, the freestyle is, though, footballer. Defenders shit themselves from him because you can't predict what he's going to do. He's not like That's, a Riyad yeah. Mahrez where you know Riyad Mahrez is going to trap the ball and he's going to come in on his left. Defenders know what he's going to do. They can't stop it. With Maximum, you, you don't know if he's going to plough right through you, knock you over, go left, go right. Hit one from 30 yards. I just, I just, I've always wondered and I thought, you know what, I'm going to ask him that because... I look at him sometimes. My dad, my dad said it to me when he shit him. And then I was like, well, have you seen this? He does this. And my dad went, no, he's shit. And then one day my dad went, you see that St. Maxman last night? He went, fucking brilliant him. I went, you said he was shit. He went, I didn't. I went, you said he was shit. He went, I didn't. I was like, people just, I don't know. I just don't think people could get their head round him. I think, uh, I think if you if you watch Match of the Day, and you, sometimes, you know, you'll be watching that and you'll think, wow, he's amazing, him. But when you do watch him for 90 minutes, he that he gets, there's a lot of groans sometimes in the crowd because he he's no defensive capabilities, doesn't want to track back, does that little fake jog thing where, you know, he's not putting any graft in. And he didn't play for months. Do you know what I mean? He didn't, in that run that we went on, he hasn't, he hasn't been playing. He's only just came back in the team because yeah. he had injuries, but Eddie Howe didn't change the team because it was winning every week. So we've normally played Joe Linton or Joe Willick as the left forward. And one of them was dropped into midfield to like alternate. But St. Maxim went into Huff. There was rumours he was going to leave in January. AC Milan were interested. I wouldn't be surprised if he leaves in the summer because I just don't think he suits what Eddie Howe wants out of a player in our style of play. Because you look at our Miron, if he's not doing stuff going forward, at least he's winning the ball back at his own corner flag. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's crafting in his yeah. own box at the back. So Maxi doesn't do that. What about Joe Linton? You just mentioned him there. Um, didn't have the best start to life at Newcastle. Came in with a big price tag. Supposed to be the goal scorer, this, that and the other. Um, Eddie seems to have changed his position and that. And, and and I think he's a bit of a cult hero up there now, isn't he? Oh, he is, mate. Absolutely. Cult hero, mate. You know what I mean? He's he's, he's yeah, one of them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a few knocking about with these now, but I had it years ago when, when we had that video call with him when I, he scored in the FA Cup and then I had to do it and I just kept kept rocking it mate because he is he's turned into an absolute legend up yeah you know what I mean there was there was a fan that got um Hawaiian shirts made with his face on it yeah and then Julian on DM the kid and said oh can you send me one of them I want to wear it for me holiday Julian was pictured wearing it on his yacht and then he sent the kid free cup final tickets so that's oh, just that, that that's the type of stuff do you know what I mean he gets the fans he gets the city he knows what it means and honestly like the job that he has done with him is just insane because not only just battling midfielder but now he's got better end product as well do you know there's one player that I always thought should have signed for Newcastle and he was made for you Mario Balotelli oh may I uh, that would have been class because City fans and Newcastle fans are similar we, we we have these connection with the players you have the connection with the players we love a bit of madness and chaos with Mario you know driving around Moss Side with big wallets full of cash and getting pulled over off the police and putting homeless people in, you know, all the stories about Mario. And I just thought at the time when Mario was floating about and he wasn't really doing much, I thought if Newcastle got him, I could see these big 25 stone Geordies with mohawks and volatile <laughs> earrings in and that. And I thought he's just made for Newcastle, man. Made Mate, for that would have been amazing. I, I wish we had of. He was linked with him a couple of years ago, but obviously that's we're going downhill now and he getting, getting on a bit. Yeah. But if we could have signed him like what? Seven years ago or something, five, six years ago, that would have been scenes, man. Just imagine, just imagine that at the time, just ripping up the Gallagher. It's too no, dangerous, though. There's too, there's too many nightclubs in Newcastle for Balotelli. It wouldn't have ended oh, well yeah. that like Tino Espria vibes. I would have got Tino vibes off him as well. I mean, I was at Main Road when Fastino Espria assaulted Keith Curl, head butted somebody, scored a goal. <laughs> um, free all it was. I think Philip Albert scored, but Fastino was just unbelievable that game. I remember yeah. as a kid watching him thinking, wow. But yeah, man, Newcastle and Manchester, the blue side and, 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 and the black and white side are pretty similar, the way they've gone on the paths. So um, you're just missing the trophies now, but I'm sure they're going to come. <laughs> and I hope so, me. I hope so. I think, to be fair, that cup final on the weekend, it was a bit premature, wasn't it, really? You know, over, just over yeah. a year since the takeover. I mean, this time last year, we are fighting relegation. Um, and in a year's time, we're fighting top four and we're in a cup final. So, I mean, that's that's an, an amazing turnaround. Good we couldn't get the trophy, but I think hopefully we just... I know Amanda Steve is very close with with your owners and she's been at your training ground. She's looked around the campus and everything. She's trying to learn from you because why wouldn't you? The blueprint is there. Literally, the yeah. blueprint is there of how to be successful. So, hopefully, we can follow City's, City's footsteps because it's uh, it's everything we dream of as fans. Like, 
we've just announced we've ju we're just building a concert stadium at the side of the, the ground. Um, it's like a twenty eight thousand seater stadium, and that right. is shut up. And then they've just announced plans now that they're building more seats on the north stand, taking the capacity up to sixty thousand, and then they're building a hotel and the fan zone where it is now. The massive fan zone. They're putting a roof over it. Obviously, it pisses down in Manchester all the time. Need so a roof. You need a roof on it to get everyone under there match day spending the money. So, yeah, See, we've done that. Everything. We're copying off that. We're, we're getting a fan zone in place for probably the end of the season, next season. We, I've no, tried out for that for years. I don't know why it's not there. You know how much Geordie's love to drink, me. It's going to make a fortune. If it's right outside the stadium. That's what I'm saying. And because um, I think City, what, what one thing City's owners did, they kept questionnaireing us all the time. Questionnaireing us. Even, I remember even one question was like, is there enough meat in the pies? Shit like that. <laughs> And they were on it all the time. That's and good, they, that one. Yeah, one of the questions was like, how many pints do you get at half time? And my mate said, I put down one, but I'd like five, but I can't get served, so I can only get one. So they must be thinking, hold on a minute, there's 30,000 people in that stadium who probably want five pints, but they can only get one. We need to improve it. Next minute, they've got more bars, more fast service things, instant pumps, the lot. So now they're maximising everything. And if you've got your own fan zone, instead of the money going to the pubs and everyone drinking in the pubs across the road, they're going to be drinking in your fan zone, giving the mm. club more money to spend. So it, it makes sense, you know what I mean? Oh, it does, I massively. And it's just, again, you can put that back in the club, can't you? Because you can see, oh, well, the fan zone this year made yeah. hundreds yeah. of thousands of pounds or whatever. Like, it makes sense and it creates a good atmosphere as well, do you know what I mean? And again, it brings the fans close at the club because they'll go there because they'll probably have, what, an XPR on, giving a chat or something as well before the game. Like, yeah. Things on for families and that it just totally makes sense, mate. No, it's good. It's good to see. Going back to the game, mate. Um, danger men. Um, obviously, from your team, I like Bruno. I think he's brilliant. We spoke about St. Maximum against Kyle Walker at, at St. James's Park. Kyle was trying to play this inverted fullback. He was giving Maximum too too uh, too much space. So I'm always wary of him. Players like that against City always get a bit of joy, a bit of pace. Adama Traore at Wolves, mm. he's shit all season until he plays us and then he's, he, he's on it. So, for me, I'm worried about Bruno because, you know, he's a great little player and St. Maximin. But on the City side, obviously, you know, there's quite a few superstars there. But who's the ones yeah. that you, you're worrying about there? I reckon Foden, after watching him the other night, I think he's going to come back to his best. I mean, arrested Erling Holland as well, scares the shit out of us. <laughs> and then um, I think Jack Grealish as well. I think yeah, Grealish, you know, he's been getting that. That went probably way too mainstream than he ever thought it would. That little comment he made about Almiron went way mainstream yeah. to talk sports. Got everyone talking about it. Almiron goes on an unbelievable best run of his life. I think Grealish might want to have something to see on the weekend. But I'd back Almiron to do well this weekend as well. I'd say Almiron needs to start playing the back of the net again. So I think he will. Um, but hopefully those players make it an exciting game. I, I always, I almost forgot about them little comments. Wonder if there'll be a bit of needle between them, or you think they're going uh -huh. to bed? Well, to be fair, uh, Matt Jack Grealish contacted Matty Target, who obviously plays for Newcastle now, and these players Villa yeah. together. And he said, "Oh, look, will you say sorry to Almiron for us? Like, I didn't mean it. I was pissed. Type of thing. It was just a joke." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Matty Target was just like he said. It, uh, he said Almiron wasn't even lost. He said the form yeah. thing was nothing to do with that. He was just like. I don't, I don't think Almiron really understands English, so I think he was just like, whatever. <laughs> I don't think he was bothered that much. Um, so I, I think they'll just have a laugh with each other before the game, hopefully, because it's just it's just tongue-in-cheek, man, isn't it? Just have a little bit of banter about it with. There's no need to take everything to heart. like. No, no. And listen, mate, um, I'm going to ask for your score prediction. What do you think? Uh, I'll be optimistic. Eh? I'll be optimistic and I'll say it's going to be 1-1. Um, but that's definitely the hearts beating. I think City will win 2 1, if I had to be honest with you, mate. Yeah, I'm going to go 2 0. Just had this feeling of 2 0 in my head. I think Erling's due a, due a big game. Now we're starting to actually get the ball in the box. So I'm going to go 2 0. But listen, Matt, I appreciate your time, mate. It's always a pleasure. Let people uh, know where they can find you on what socials and stuff. All good, mate. Thanks for having us. It's uh, Matty at the Magpie channel. So the Magpie channel TV on YouTube, Magpie channel on Instagram, all that. And I've seen you on the overlap. No, mm. That's good stuff, mate. Listen, there's a big campaign in Manchester, yeah? Everyone comes up to me at the match and goes, when are you getting on that overlap? Because we need you to defend City on the overlap. 
I think I'm a little bit too raw for that overlap. They're not ready for me yet, Matty. Me, I thought I was because I, I never normally get invited on. It's normally the last uh, Kendall that's sitting next to oh, me. Kendall, but, uh, yeah. They need an extra one this 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 week, so that they brought me on. Should be bringing us back after that performance, I reckon. Like, but me, you should have been there. I was hoping you were going to be there actually, because obviously it was filmed on the same day when I was there, and I seen there was a couple of City fans there. So I need to get yourself in there, mate. I'm trying, mate. I'm trying. But listen, always a pleasure. Wish you the best for the, the rest of the season. And um, you take it easy, mate. Cheers, mate. Good luck in that title race, eh? Cheers, pal. Thank you.